Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. It's Reviewing Man, reviewing what he can. Movies are his jam, so let's get twisted, man. It's review. Yo, welcome to the Reveal Rob Show. I appreciate you joining in on this new episode. We're going to be talking Wonka, the new film about the Willy Wonka franchise that released over the weekend. Uh, I'm going to give you my spoiler-free thoughts on that film as well. A little Nightmare Before Christmas discussion, and then we're going to give you news, including the mandatory DC films and horror news on this episode. Appreciate you joining in. I am the host of the show, Revealed Rob. Hope uh, everybody out there has been doing good. We're getting close to the Christmas holiday, if you celebrate. So hopefully you've been watching some Christmas films, getting in the spirit and all that good stuff. Um, I'm kind of there, but not fully there. Um, I did get challenged to do 25 Christmas films in 25 days. And that's probably not going to happen um, for multiple reasons. Uh, mostly the fact I'm just running out of time and I need to catch up on films that I missed in 2023. Um, and I think that's a little more important than watching Christmas films. Um, that's just my take. But uh, nonetheless, hope everybody out there is doing good and having a good time watching Christmas movies, getting ready for the holiday. If you celebrate, if you do not celebrate, also hope that you're having a wonderful time as well, man. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. You are here to hear the review. Here to hear. I'm freaking rhyming like Limp Biscuit over here. But, um, I said here again. Anyways, Wonka is rated PG for some violence, some mild language, and thematic elements. It is a kids' family musical film running in at one hour and 56 minutes and is currently showing in theaters. The film is based on the extraordinary character at the center of Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, uh, Raw Dahl's most iconic children's book and one of the best-selling children's book of all time. Wonka tells the wondrous story of how the world's greatest inventor, magician, and chocolate maker became the beloved Willy Wonka we know today. Rotten Tomatoes critics have it at an 84%, while the audience has it at a 91%, and IMDb has the film at a 7.4 out of 10. So, what were my thoughts on the film? All right, so I remember when this trailer came out, and I want to say my brother Tombstone Josh, check out his show here on the Thermy Podcast Network, The Metal Groove, new episode out now. I want to say he and I talked about it on WBRO when it came out, but, you know, I wasn't overly thrilled about the film coming out. I think it was, you know, one of those things where I, you know, saw the other two Wonka films, and I was like, I don't know if I need another Wonka movie, but uh, nonetheless, didn't hate the fact that they were making one. It just didn't grab my fancy, if you will. But, um, you know, so going into the movie uh, this week, seeing it, it wasn't overly you know, anticipating the film or anything like that. I was seeing it, new movie, review here on the show, all that stuff. But I did have vague interests, if that makes sense. Um, because, again, I, I, I like the other Wonka films. I haven't watched either one of them in quite some time. But, uh, you know, I watched them, enjoyed them. You know, Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory, um, and then Charlie and Chocolate Factory. And, you know, I thought they were enjoyable films and all that stuff. So going into the movie, there there was at least some kind of anticipation. Um, not huge anticipation or anything like that, but it had some kind of interest going in there. So, Going into the film, enjoying it, I want to say first off that it was it fits perfectly for this time of year. I mentioned earlier, it's the Christmas season, it's the holiday season, and the the the, the wonderful wonders of the time of this year, and you know magic and everything like that. It, it fits this time of year, it kind of fits the vibe of everything. So I, I like that. I like um I like the storytelling here. This is pretty much a prequel to the uh, the Gene Wilder starring Willy Wonka film. Um, as you can tell, if you've seen the trailer from the look and the mannerisms that Timothy Chalamet is throwing out there and everything with the character, you can tell that it's a prequel to that film. So, um, I, I like that aspect. I liked uh, getting to know the character early, uh, premises, seeing the character grow and uh, all that stuff. It was interesting to me. Now, one of the first things I thought about while watching this movie was, I guess I completely forgot how much music is in these films like uh you know watching going throughout this movie i was like oh this is a freaking musical <laughs> um and for some reason like i remember certain songs from the willy wonka films but i i didn't remember a lot and i honestly did not remember that they were huge musical films and this movie is 
no different. Like, there is a ton of songs in this movie, which is not necessarily bad. After I left the theater, I did pull up the soundtrack and, you know, added some songs to my movie um, soundtracks uh, playlist, which I do that uh, because I am a movie nerd, if you've not noticed. But um, I, I do like some of the songs. That was a good thing. I didn't know Timothy Chalamet was a singer, but, you know, he is singing in the film. So good on him. Let's go ahead and go in that route real quick with uh, Timothy Chalamet. I don't know much about this dude at all. Um, I've heard the name talked about multiple times. He is uh, an actor of the like the younger generation that's getting talked about a lot. Um, probably considered a future actor. Him and Tom Holland get brought up a lot about for a lot of roles and everything. Um, but this is like my first real film watching him um he's been in a lot of movies i know he's in the dune films i haven't seen either one of those he's uh uh, I was in Little Women I haven't gotten around to seeing that uh, don't look up I missed that movie he's in Interstellar I don't remember him in Interstellar I think he's uh, one of Matthew McConaughey's kids in that movie but I don't remember much you know it's just a long way of saying he's done a lot of films I have not seen any of them <laughs> um so and if I have seen them I don't remember his performance in that one but this movie and seeing his performance dude is a talent uh without a doubt like I said I didn't know he sings I didn't know he was a singer maybe he's not a singer maybe he just sang for this movie like uh Jessica Chastain did for the eyes of Tammy Faye or um, Andrew Garfield learned to sing for Tick Tick Boom. Like maybe he just, you know, learned here. I don't know his background, but I think he does a wonderful job. Um, not just with the singing, but with acting in general. Like he's able to uh, convey a lot of different emotions in the film from being the um, eccentric magician chocolate maker to the dramatic to, you know, scenes that are going to make you cry <laughs> um, like it, it's all kinds of things in there so he, he does a good job with acting the whole cast overall is uh, pretty solid in this film and with all the characters we meet and all that stuff um so overall i think he was really good and was a good introduction to timothy chalamet um the film itself i think is really good i think it fits perfectly if you've enjoyed um willy wonka and if you enjoy charlie the chocolate factory even though charlie chocolate factory is like the tim burton style vibes and all that stuff you know so it was like a different look and everything it, it, it get the gist you know of what's going on here um so yes uh if you enjoy those movies there's no way you would enjoy this film but I, I like the movie. I kind of mentioned it here with his um, Timothy Chalamet's performance. I like that the film hits on so many different vibes and emotions. It's it's the wonder. It's the interest. It's the intrigue. It's the suspense. It's the drama. It's the comedy. Oh, comedy is solid in this film as well. A lot of funny parts. But it's all of those things. It's a musical. It's It hits on so many different wondrous whimsical moments in the film that just works and plays well that's why again i think it's a good film for this time of year because it plays off of all these different emotions and gets you into you know a, a place where you're sitting there like honestly in the nostalgia factor i'll get into a second but honestly it's a solid film and getting into that nostalgia part if you, and again, I'm not spoiling. I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously. But there, there are bits and you know pieces where you're watching the film that will remind you of other parts. Mostly, again, the Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka film because this is a prequel to that. So you'll you'll get the the um, you'll get the things if you've seen it. You'll get the Easter eggs or you know the vibes or whatever you want to call it. Um, and definitely see that movie if you haven't. Uh, Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka film is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like what they put together in this movie. I think it is a perfect mix of all kinds of different kind of films um, and all that. Um, what it doesn't really have, and, and there's there's suspense in the film, but it's now, it's like if you've seen the other Willy Wonka movies, like there's this overall creepy vibe, you know, to like certain scenes, like when, you know, the chocolate river on the boat and all that stuff, and, you know, uh, the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka film, like they didn't really get those moments in this movie um but that doesn't hurt the film by any means i think it's perfectly fine again this is a the coming of age this is the beginning of the willy wonka journey and this is willy wonka um trying to live the dream of becoming a world known big time chocolatier like it's not even that he just wants to live his life of being a chocolate maker and magician which again i don't know and I haven't watched the movies in a while, so forgive me. But I don't know how much magic was brought up and talked about in those films. Like, you can kind of get it with what's going on, in, you know, in the films and just seeing the things. And there's, like, this this vibe and idea of magic in the movie. But 
I don't think it was ever really talked about all that much. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a center point in this film, and you know what Willy Wonka is able to do, uh, magic wise and sleight of hands and uh, you know illusions and all that stuff. Like it, it's cool, it's awesome, it's awesome to see. It plays out very well and works really cool. So overall, you know, finishing thoughts on the film without spoiling anything. I think it is a very solid film and is worth your time to see it. Uh, again, it was about an hour and. 56 minutes so you're giving yourself about two hours 30 minutes of the theaters between ads which is a thing now and i'm not talking about trailers like trailers come after ads now in movie theaters i don't know when this happened like there used to be just the freaking maria menudo's thing this is regal i don't know what other you know theaters do but the maria menudo's thing um movie newbie or whatever and then there would be trailers, but now there's like ads galore. Like every single Pepsi drink has its own ad, <laughs> and you know, uh, there's like car commercials. There's a Disney commercial about their theme park. Um, I, I don't know, it's wild, but uh, so yeah, you give yourself you know two hours, two hours, thirty minutes, what have you, but uh, worth it. It is enjoyable. A kids' movie, you can take your kids to it and have them you know be entranced by what's going on in the screen, on the screen, all that stuff. Like I said, there is drama moments, there's suspense moments, but not enough to really, uh, I think, take kids out of wanting to watch the movie. I think they'll be uh, enthralled with the whimsical and the the magical and the chocolate of it all. So overall solid film very um, well acted and put together and all that man so yeah i say wonka is worth your time to check out especially if you're looking for a film to watch um if your family's getting together during this time of year and hitting the movie theater is one of your things to do there you go you can go see that i know aquaman's coming out so that may be a movie you want to see with your family as well that'll be next week's review maybe possibly because you know the show releases on mondays and next monday is christmas so um we'll see what ends up happening there but Nonetheless, man, uh, Wonka gets a pass for me. Will it be in my top ten films of the year? I don't know. We're gonna. Have to, it's gonna take some discussions uh, in my brain as I talk to myself. Uh, the voices in my head about uh, the rankings of the films this year. Um, trying to gather all the movies I've seen. Like I said, there are still some films of 2023 that I want to see, um, just to see if they uh, get there. Obviously, the fact I haven't seen them yet means that obviously all that important um but uh we'll see what happens i can watch a movie and get surprised for sure so we'll see what all unfolds there um and we'll have that episode out at some point but uh nonetheless wonka very chocolatey well done film man so there you go um yes next thing i want to talk about is the nightmare before christmas quick discussion about this movie um uh, classic cult classic people love this movie it took a while for people to fall in love with the film uh, when it was originally released people weren't overly um in loving it but like 10 or so years later the film you know hit a cult craze and has been a everywhere um <laughs> since so uh i wanted to bring this up because this time going back to halloween uh this movie is talked about back and forth is it a halloween movie is it a christmas film um and it's always kind of like you know back and forth some people are like ah it's a halloween movie some people are like ah it's a christmas movie some people are like i watch it on both um which all options are perfectly fine whatever your choice is there is cool and all that stuff i'm bringing this up because i watched the movie again recently it is a, a yearly watch for me and uh and the soundtrack and all that stuff like i listen to that and all everything and i get involved in it i go to walgreens they always have like a nightmare before christmas set up there i i look at what they have and see what kind of cool stuff they got i bought one of the christmas trees i did a video on the throwing podcast network youtube if you can find it just look it up there's a um unboxing video of that christmas tree and all that stuff and review and all that stuff of the christmas tree but I, I bring this up because I've officially come to a decision on what I think this movie is, um, be it Halloween or Christmas film. And um, I am in the boat of, I used to watch it both holidays um, because it fits the vibe, right? But after watching it more recently, I 100% believe that this is a Christmas movie over a Halloween movie. And the reason I feel this way is while the film starts on Halloween. Um, it's the end of Halloween. Jack's coming back from doing his regular Halloween Pumpkin King duties. And from there, we're moving into away from Halloween. Like, the Halloween aspect of the film is over within the first couple minutes of the movie. Um, after that, the main focus is Jack trying to find something new to do 
and he ends up finding Christmas Town, and the rest of the film is all about Christmas until the very last couple of minutes where it's like, I've got new plans for Halloween. Um, so again, the movie could squeakily fit both holidays, but to me, this movie is mainly about Christmas. <laughs> like, it's mainly about um, learning what Christmas is, wanting to bring Christmas um, to to light with Jack. Jack wants to do Christmas stuff, and on, Chris on Christmas, he does Christmas stuff, <laughs> you know, so to me, the film is more of a Christmas film than Halloween movie. Now, again, it does start off on Halloween and ends with them working towards Halloween again, so eh, whatever route you want to go with there, but to me, primarily, this is a Christmas film, in my opinion, so if you got an opinion on that, let me know in the comments. I don't care. We all have opinions. It doesn't have to fit. Um, you can watch the movie whenever you want. You can watch the movie in July, if you want to, you know, <laughs> like, there's no right or wrong time to watch a movie, as far as I'm concerned, but if you're feeling like watching a movie, freaking watch the thing. But that's my thoughts recently when I was watching Nightmare Before Christmas. I just wanted to bring that up real quick on the show. <laughs> so there you go. Um, let's see. Jumping from there to mandatory news time with DC Films. We're going to start off with a lot of stuff going on over there, rumor-wise and streaming-wise. So let's go ahead and start it off with the first rumor that broke was that Palm, uh, I'm going to mess his last name up because I'm me, but Palm uh, Clementif, who you may know mostly as playing Mantis in James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy films, was announced to have joined the Superman Legacy cast. Now, there's an announcement that came out from very reputable sources. I want to say it was Variety or Hollywood Reporter um, saying that she had been cast in Superman Legacy. James Gunn immediately, like, didn't even take too long before James Gunn immediately debunked this. Was like, this is incorrect information saying, quote, despite Palm being one of my favorite actors to work with, this is 100% not true. Not only is Palm not in the movie, but no one has ever discussed her being in the movie, nor do I have any idea what role she would possibly play, end quote. Um, he released another quote later, and I didn't fully write down, but he was saying he wanted to get this out quickly because Palm was going to, Palm was asking about it because she didn't know anything about it, and he wanted to get it out there because she would end up being asked about it at every single con for the next two years before Spider-Man came out, or Spider-Man, Superman came out. Um, so, love that James answers these things quickly, and this is another reason why you have to take all this stuff with a grain of salt, with any kind of rumors. Now, I talk rumors on the show, and I always say before, listen, this hasn't been confirmed. Like the Pedro Pascal, Mr. Fantastic thing, Reed Richards thing, has not been confirmed whatsoever. People think he's playing it. That's fine, <laughs> but that has not been confirmed by Marvel. Marvel has not put anything out that I've seen that says any casting whatsoever for the Fantastic Four movie. So, again, you got to take this stuff with a grain of salt, right? So, Palm is not in the film. Now, with that said, James, as they quote, obviously loves Palm. Palm is a great actress. I've enjoyed her as Rick and Mantis. She's awesome in Mantis and Guardians of the Galaxy. And obviously James is going to bring her over to the DCU at some point in time. Like, whatever character it is, we don't know yet, but it's going to happen, obviously. So that is, you know, the thing. Another thing, honestly, that took the rumor room, so I think I talked about it last, on last week's show, um, Nicholas Holt, another young, talented actor, was announced to be playing Lex Luthor. And I uh, I was like, cool, that's awesome. We've heard these rumors for a while, that's cool and all that. And then I saw that James Gunn hadn't said anything about it. And I'm like, normally when there's a casting announcement, he's, you know, there, whether in the next day or a couple hours the next day, announcing it as well. Um, and I didn't see that for a while. I was like, wow, that's weird. Why has he not done anything? He has officially come out and said that Nicholas Holt is in the role, um, and he explained why it took so long, saying that um, while those reports came out, it was never officially finalized. They now have officially finalized him being Lex Luthor. So, again, we have to take all this stuff on the internet. Remember, if it's on the internet, yes, it could be true, but a lot of the times it's not true. So, you gotta take it all with, you know, a grain of salt and just be calm. I know it's fun times, it's awesome and everything like that, but we gotta... Um, pull back the expectations a little bit. It's like, cool, but just wait for, like, the official announcements, you know? So, uh, there's there's that going on over there. Um, let's see. Future of the Arkham video games. Um, the Arkham games, of course, those are the Batman games with um, uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and then Arkham Knight, and then there's the prequel game Arkham Origins, um, which is, like, the redheaded stepchild of the group, which sucks because I love that game. But... 
Uh, there's been a question about the future of the Arkham games after Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League comes out, because that movie does take place in the Arkham universe. Um, and so uh, James Gunn was asked about this, because remember when James Gunn did his announcement for the DCU, he said everything will be uh, worked on over there, so most of it will be canon, and then they've kind of bass track on the video game, saying that all the video games will be canon and all that stuff, which is fine. But he was asked recently um, if the... Suicide Squad game will be the final game in the Arkham Universe, and Gunn responded saying, quote, uh, no plans of it being the last, end quote. So, there's going to be more games in the Arkham Universe. Now, of course, there is questions about what kind of games. Will they be games with Batman? Will they be continuations of the Arkham Batman games? It's tough to say, um, because with the exception of Arkham Origins, all of those games had uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill voicing, of course, Batman and the Joker, and uh, sadly, Kevin Conroy's no longer here, and Mark Hamill's announced that he's retired playing the Joker, mostly because Mark, um, Kevin Conroy's no longer here uh, to play the character, and it doesn't feel right to him, so I, we'll see. Um, now, of course, you can do more games in between Origins and Arkham Asylum, if you wanted to, and you can get the voice actor from Origins, maybe, to do... Uh, more games there if they go that route. Of course, there's other characters. You can do a Nightwing game. You can do a Robin game, Red Hood game, um, Batgirl game, Batwoman game. Like, there's all kinds of stuff you can do in the DC Arkham Universe. Obviously, they're doing this Suicide Squad game that, you know, is in the Arkham Universe, but I guess doesn't... I don't know. I haven't fully looked into it. But, um... Yeah, it's it's good to know that they're still going to make games there. I love DC, and having DC video games to play is pretty cool. Um... So yeah, and Suicide Squad, they've been releasing more and more videos of that and kind of like behind the scenes creating of that game and all that stuff. I'm excited for it still. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll take it for what it is. <laughs> and we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, let's see, other rumors that have come out that have apparently been confirmed by James Gunn, but I have not seen that confirmation from James Gunn. Maybe I missed it. But uh, there's rumors that Matt Reeves will be producing an Arkham DCU series. Um, so Matt Reeves is doing The Batman over there in what's considered the DC Elseworlds now. Um, and, of course, we have the sequel to The Batman coming as well as the Penguin series. Um, and I want to say there's like a Gotham show. Gotham PD show. I think that's still being worked on. But uh, this uh, report has come out that he's doing that, which is fine. I mean, if they want to do an Arkham series, cool. And again, this would be the DCU. The Batman is not connected to the DCU um, storyline. There will be a different Batman and all that stuff. James did want to get uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman in it, but uh, Matt Reeves said he would prefer th that story was not included in the DCU, which, you know, fine. Whatever, what have you. I would like Robert Pattinson's Batman to be there. I think he's been great as Batman in the one role I've seen him at do so far. But, you know, and Pattinson, I think, is around my age, so he could play the character for a long time if they decided to do that. But not doing that is perfectly fine as well. I'm still going to be there to support him. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, but yeah, apparently there's an Arkham series on the way with Matt Reeves producing. So we'll see how that all works out. Um, speaking of... DCU and DC Elseworlds. Uh, James Gunn has also confirmed that there will be a new intro sequence for the DC projects, uh, the DCU. So, you know, film studios have their openings. DC's had one for a while. Marvel has theirs. Um, Blumhouse has their own, as well as, you know, countless other um, production companies and everything, and studios. So, there will be a new one for the DCU, which, of course, you would expect. Uh, but there will also be one for else, the DC Elseworlds films, which will be different, which I like that. Um, again, seems obvious, but I'm glad that they're doing that. Because I, I like this aspect, uh, that there's different worlds. Like, there's certain things you can do in the DCU, and there's certain things you do in the Elseworlds. So, like, I know it's probably in a perfect world, if you will. Uh, the two would be put together. Um, but... I, I'm fine with this, and who knows how long the Elseworlds stuff's going to go. Like, the Elseworlds might just be the stuff that's already been announced, and then after that, who knows? Um, now they seem to probably do stuff with Elseworlds, but I think at some point it's going to be like, why are we doing that when they can just have all this stuff exist in the DCU? My, you know, <laughs> but we'll see how it all works out there. Uh, either way, I'm going to support it, and I'm not confused by it by any means. It's pretty easy to understand that there's differences here, and they're doing something different here than they're doing there. Yes, they're both DC, but they're different worlds, so it shouldn't be all that hard to 
you know, understand. But there you go. Um, mentioned Aquaman earlier. That'll be coming out next, well, this week. Um, as a release of this episode, I will be seeing that and giving my thoughts on that film, of course. Um, it is the final film in the DCEU, and quite possibly Jason Momoa's final appearance as Aquaman. Um, of course, like I mentioned the DCU, that is a new world, a new start. Uh, some characters will be portrayed by the same actors, like John Cena playing uh, Peacemaker still, Amanda Waller still play, uh, being played by um, Viola Davis, so, and what have you. Um, but we'll see what happens with Momoa. He was asked again about his Aquaman future as they're doing press now for the film. And he said, quote, I don't necessarily want it to be the end, but I don't think it's really like a choice. The truth of it is, I mean, if the audience loves it, then there's a possibility. But right now, I'm like, it's not looking too good. Um, so comic book films this year have been hit with the, uh, what's comic book fatigue? Um, the films have not done too well. Now there's a amount of other things you can go through here with, you know, people... Maybe they are getting tired of comic book movies. I don't know. I'm not. A uh, vast majority of people are not getting tired of them. But there is this, you know, thing where it's like, okay, DC's restarting. Do these movies matter? Yes, they matter, obviously. But people are, you know, they have that thought process. Some people are getting tired of all the Marvel things. And they're like, uh, space it out. What's going on here? I don't feel like watching a TV show to understand what's going on in this movie. Yada, yada, yada. Um... And all that stuff, so there's no telling how Aquaman does. Guardians of the Galaxy obviously did well. Um, but we'll see how Aquaman does. Like, hey, people love Jason Momoa, right? So we'll see how it all works out. And again, this is the swan song for the DCEU, so maybe people will be out there to be like, let's you know, go see the final film of the DCEU. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, as far as him playing Aquaman in the future, I've enjoyed him as Aquaman again. Jason Momoa's you know, extremely charismatic. He's he's likable. I don't know if there's people who hate that man, but I, I I don't think he's done in DC by any means. Whether it's Aquaman or the Lobo rumors or whatever, he's definitely going to play something in the DCU. Um, I mean, I think I think I'm ready for a different Aquaman. Um, again, there's nothing against Jason Momoa. I've enjoyed what he's done, but I think it'd be fine if we get somebody else to play the character in the future. And just I mean, we're already getting a new Superman. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Wonder Woman. We're getting a new Batman. Uh, we're getting a new Flash, probably. We're getting a new... Um, cyborg, I guess. I haven't really said anything about Cyborg. So, <laughs> I don't know. But, we'll see, man. We, we just have to wait and see where these things go. Um, but, nonetheless, Aquaman will be here soon. And hopefully it does decent work. Uh, let's see. Do, what is, anything? Yes, one more thing DC-wise, which again, I'm still trying to figure out why this is going on. Well, I know why this is going on. But, uh, so, uh, multiple of their films have recently hit Netflix, which people have been talking about and posting about and all that stuff. And then, they have had now announced that Tubi has struck a deal with Warner Brothers Discovery to stream DC movies and series as well. And the reason I'm like, why is this going on is because there's Max. There's literally a streaming service owned by Warner Brothers Discovery that could be the only place that plays these things. But Warner Brothers Discovery is apparently, if you believe the reports on the internet, getting close to bankruptcy. So they're trying to, you know, put these movies out there for them to make more money, um, to try to salvage things over there. It's kind of what you get, I guess, with, you know, you know, shelving these movies people want to see for tax write-offs and everything. People don't trust you too much. Um, but it's it's a, you know, getting rid of Looney Tunes. People don't like that. Um, yeah, like, I love the rumor that Universal could buy Warner Brothers. That would just be the perfect end for me. Like, obviously, you know how much I love the Universal theme parks and them owning Warner Brothers would mean... Warner Brothers horror films like The Conjuring or It, yada yada, could come to Halloween Horror Nights, which would be awesome. But I just feel like Universal has a better grips on what they're doing as a film company. Warner Brothers is just kind of lost in it all, and they're kind of searching and grabbing at pieces right now to see what they can do. Uh, obviously, they're trying to do something new with DC because that's a big world. They're trying to do something with Lord of the Rings because that's a big name. They're trying to reboot the Wizarding World because that's a big name. All that stuff. But it's just like, 
And speaking of Wizarding World, that has stuff at Universal as well. So if Universal bought Warner Brothers, makes that a little bit easier. Um, which Epic Universe has pictures of stuff going on over there. And there's a new picture of a freaking hand holding the the Elder Wand on freaking the Wizarding World area of Epic Universe. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, I love theme parks, man. <laughs> I don't talk theme parks enough. I love theme parks. But... That's pretty much what's going on here. I mean, it's cool that people are going to have the option to see, uh, you know, these DC movies and all that stuff, because that's one of the fun things um, that I've seen recently on um, social media and all this stuff. So all the people who've now watched The Flash since it's been streaming, and they're like, well, this movie got a lot of hate for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who, who are we talking to here? Like, obviously, that movie was overly hated for no reason whatsoever. Um Except for internet lies, but we're not getting into that. Um, let's see, so that's basically what's going on DC-wise. Let's go ahead and jump over to horror, where the biggest news involves a Universal Monster Classic, which again, Epic Universe is going to have Universal Monsters Land, which again, you can see photos and that land is looking oh so good. There's talks of, which we're going to be talking about this movie here. So, Wolfman. We've got an update on the Wolfman Universal Monsters movie, and there's a rumor that there's a Wolfman roller coaster ride at Epic Universe, which is going to be... Wait for it. Epic. Anyways, uh, Wolfman movie update. So Blumhouse Universal Pictures are going to be doing this one as well. Um, and they have announced a release date for the film of October 25th, 2024. Yes, 2024. Um, so Halloween movie, perfect timing there. And uh, they've announced a cast change. So originally Ryan Gosling was going to be starring in this film, but now we've got Christopher Abbott as the star of the movie, which I'm not 100% sure who Christopher Abbott is. I have seen a lot of comments saying, oh, they prefer this over um, Gosling, which I mean Gosling's a very talented actor, so maybe people are just overreacting, but... Have I seen anything with this Christopher guy in it? No. He is in Poor Things, which is a movie I plan on seeing. But, yeah, just a quick look. I don't recognize any of these movies. So, I have not seen his work. But, that doesn't mean he's not going to be good. So, he is now going to be the star of the new Wolfman movie. Um, of course, monster movie. Classic universe monster movie. Blumhouse Universal Pictures are, of course, behind this. Uh, details on the projects are being kept under wrap. But uh, Christopher Abbott will be playing a man whose family is being terrorized by a lethal predator. Wolfman will be directed by Lee Wanell, um, who also did the very well put together and well done 2020 release of The Invisible Man, which uh, was a new launch of a monster universe, if you will, whatever. Shut up. <laughs> but uh, that movie did very well at the box office. And of course, they're trusting Lee Wanell again, who, again, that Invisible Man movie, I have not watched enough, but I've watched it several times when it came out. Very good. So, I I mean, other obviously, we, Leon L is behind other stuff that has been very well. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited for this. I love the Universal Monsters. Getting new stuff in the Universal Monster world is just fun for me. And I'm so excited to see how this Wolfman movie turns out. Because it's got, it's got really good potential. Uh, let's see. Saw 11 has been announced, which comes as no surprise after Saw X released earlier this year. Do very well re um, reviews at box office and all that stuff. Um, so it's not surprising that this film is being announced and Saw seems to be back in its game with uh, its releasing because this will be released next year on September 27th, 2024. Uh, the film will have a new rowdy writing team, but um, which is different uh, since the last three films were done by... Um, the same writing team will be having a different writing team this time forward. Um, I enjoyed Saw X. You can check out my review if you want to. Um, it's not surprising that this film franchise has come back. People have, you know, loved the Saw franchise, um, even though most of those movies have kind of sucked. But um, fun in some other aspects, but not the best overall. Sucks is a harsh word. Um, but, you know, some of those films are tough. But. Saw is like one of those franchises people get excited about when they announce a new film and you know here we go with Saw 11 being announced time period that it takes place don't know um I would hope it's a continuation of Saw X so uh, Saw X if you're not um, aware takes place in between uh, the first Saw movie and Saw 2 so we'll see where this one ends up going, but nonetheless, there is another Saw movie on the way, and it will be releasing next year, so, had one this year, we have one next year, this kind of follows the Saw, um, tra trajectory, if you will, um, because, you know, they used to release a movie every Halloween, or something like that, so, 
you know, good on them. We, we've got to do something. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see. Chucky series is back filming and back under production. They announced that John Waters will be returning to the Chucky franchise. Um, Waters will be playing a character by the name of Wendell Wilkins, um, the reclusive creator of the Good Guy Dawes, who gets drawn into Chucky's tangled web. Uh, John Waters, I said, returns to the Chucky franchise because he was in seat of Chucky. That character did not make it. Um, but uh, he's playing a different character here, which is nothing new. I mean, Devin Sawa's been playing a different character in all the seasons so far. So uh, just a good fun time over there at the Chucky's show. I'm glad they're back um, working. They had to shut down because of the writer um, and actor strike, but they are back going, and we will have the second half of Chucky season three in 2024. Um, let's see, Orphan. We're getting another Orphan movie. So, Orphan First Kill came out recently. William Brent Bell behind, um, or in the director's chair. Uh, that movie, uh, Orphan First Kill, was a prequel to um, Esther's first movie, Orphan. Obviously, uh, the filmmaker revealed that he's actively developing a follow-up, saying, "Quote: We're developing a third one now. The franchise's rule book has been opened up to where another, uh, where, to where anything is possible." And knowing where we are in the process already, I'm extremely excited about the twists and turns that we have in store, end quotes. Um, love the first Orphan movie. Orphan First Kill, I did enjoy. I only saw it the one time when it came out. Um, but I did enjoy it. So getting another movie there, I think, will be fun. I think there's an enjoyable aspect uh, to those movies. Uh, I mean, the first movie just has... It's just awesome. <laughs> um, with uh, the twists and all that stuff. Again, that can spoil anything there, even though the movie's been out for a long time. Um, but, yeah. Doing more in the orphan world, film world, is um, cool. Why not? Let's go there. Uh, let's see. Friday the 13th, real quick. Let's jump into this before... Uh, this is the last bit of horror news before we jump into the final bits of news to end out the show. So, the video game. Friday the 13th, the video game... Uh, the license is expiring. We've talked about this before on the show, and it is coming up very quickly. So uh, they p made a post. The time has come. Our license for Friday the 13th will expire on December 31st, 2023. On that date, Friday the 13th, the game will no longer be available for sale, both physically and digitally. The game will, however, continue to function through at least December 31st, 2024, if you already own it. At this time, we've made the decision to reduce the price to $4.99 uh, for the base game and $0.99 cents for each piece of DLC content. We will continue to offer the title and continue at that price point right up until it is removed from digital and physical storefronts on December 31st, 2023. We would like to thank our community for the dedication they've shown to the Friday the 13th video game and gone interactive as a whole, and we are happy the game will live on a while longer and continue to be enjoyed by anyone owning the game already. Um, so let's again, the game will function through at least December 31st, 2024, if you already own it. Okay, so the game will no longer be sold um, at the, uh, you know pretty much at the end of this year so if you haven't got the game already and you want to check it out go ahead and go get that i do have the physical copy over there um i've given my thoughts on that game but at the same time i've not played that game with friends which seems to be the main focus and fun of the game so uh, if you've not got the game yet 4.99 go ahead and go get it um yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's a Friday the 13th game. You know, it's an interesting idea. Support horror video games. Um, there you go. <laughs> and, of course, Gun has the um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre game out right now as well. So there you go, man. Um, let's see, jumping into other news before we end out the show here. Uh, Jack Black has let it be known that a Super Mario Brothers movie sequel has not been talked about. Um, sequel to the animated box office smash hit that came out this year. Uh, Jack Black said, quote, it has been radio silence. The only chatter has been coming from me, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to chatter. I've been uh, chomping at the bit to get back to business, end quote. Uh, interesting. And, you know, uh, Jack Black is nominated for uh, Peaches for Oscar, right? So, Hopefully that wins, because I love that song. Uh, that song easily made my 2023 recap. Um, it's interesting to see that there's nothing going on there, which, you know, that movie was a huge success. Anytime a movie's a huge success, they're immediately already trying to work on a sequel. I know they announced that they're going to try to do more films in the Nintendo world. There's been rumors about a Zelda movie. I, th I think they've even announced that they're doing a Zelda movie. Um, it's interesting to see that there's not anything going on Super Mario Brothers wise though. So, 
got to see what happens, I guess. But interesting to hear that happens. Um, let's see, Zack Snyder, who has Rebel Moon coming out this week as well. Yes, uh, coming out this week as well on Netflix, so go ahead and check that out. Um, he is talking about Sucker Punch, a movie he did a while back, uh, having a director's cut saying, quote, I'm working with Warner Brothers to try and find a window to go back in. Even though we did an extended version, it's not the full realized movie. Um, Snyder also said that although it's been more than a decade since the film's original release, he would like to get the main cast back, some of the main cast back together uh, if he was going to film a director's cut saying, quote, I think it's good if I can get those guys, Emily Browning and Abby Cornish and the crew back in. Uh, some reshoots would be amazing, end quote. Well, ten years later doing reshoots is interesting. Um, Sucker Punch is a movie that I don't remember much of. Uh, I saw it once. You know, <laughs> I saw it one time. Um, don't think I hated it, but at the same time, weird movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Sucker Punch. I don't remember much of that movie. Emily Browning. I remember seeing it because Emily Browning was in it, and I just I think this is coming off of what Lemony Snicket. So I'm like, cool. She's got something going on. Um, see what she's doing in there. Don't know what she's doing now. Um, and then Vanessa Hudgens was in it, and I'm a Vanessa I'm a Vanessa Hudgens fan. So, um, so for those reasons, again, it seems like an enjoyable movie from what I can remember. Um, action movie. Uh, weird film. <laughs> um, weird film from what I remember, but it's been a while. Uh, but yeah, director's cut, why not? So now we're going to start getting released the Snyder cut of Sucker Punch, I guess. Which sounds like they got to do reshoots and all that stuff, but that dude's busy. Like those Rebel Moon movies, they have, I think they've had several of those. So we'll see how it all works out there, but uh, that's a movie I'll be checking out and see if that ends up making the top 10 as well. Uh, let's see, Anya Taylor, jo speaking of top 10, we're going to end the show with Netflix's top 10 movies of the year, based on Netflix. Um, let's see, Anya Taylor-Joy is a rumor galore, apparently, over there at Marvel. Uh, if you remember, on a recent episode of the show, I talked about how she's being rumored to play a villain in the Fantastic Four movie, some people even saying uh, Silver Surfer. But uh, there's now a rumor saying that Anya Taylor-Joy will be reprising her role as Magic uh, from the New Mutants in Deadpool 3. Um... New Mutants is a movie that was struck with a lot of issues. Uh, seemed like it was never going to be released and was finally released. Was the, what, that was released during COVID times as well, right? So that kind of went under the radar, if I remember correctly. Um, the New Mutants. Yeah, 2020. Um, again, I didn't hate that movie either. I'm pretty... I guess easy person when it comes to movies. <laughs> I don't know. Um, if I don't like a movie, I'm not going to talk about it, obviously. But uh, The New Mutants, I don't remember hating that movie. I liked the horror aspects of it and all that stuff. And there, there's pieces of it. Yeah, sure. I wasn't into, but, you know, there's some cool moments in that movie. And Anna Taylor-Joy is a fantastic actress and easily one of my favorite actresses. So if she reprises the role of Magic and... Uh, Deadpool 3, cool. And I'm just interested to see what that Deadpool movie is at this point. I know Ryan Reynolds has come out saying, let's not spoil things and do set photos because people are releasing those, which is ridiculous. I don't know why people would do that anyways. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what's going on with this Deadpool movie. You know, Deadpool coming over to the MCU, you know, obviously mutants and all that stuff. So, let's wait and see what happens there. And then, yes, uh, Netflix's top ten films of the year based on Netflix. So, Gonna go through that before we end the episode here, so let me just get that pulled up, because apparently what I had pulled up decided it doesn't want to be up anymore. So, uh, give me a moment as we try to get here. Okay, so Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. Where are you at, Netflix? Why are you being a pain in my patootie? Netflix, talk amongst yourself. Is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie? We will never know. Yes, we will. I say it's a Christmas movie. All right, come on. You can do it. We're almost there. All right. What is Netflix's data reveals about their top ten films? All right. So, Netflix is streaming. They've announced their... All right. So, here we go. Here are the top ten films, eight of which Netflix developed or financed, that appeared in a report which tracked hours watched from January to June of 2023. Now, June... All right, whatever. Uh, so the mother. This is Jennifer Lopez movie, I guess. And it says Jennifer Lopez right there. 
Uh, the queen of Netflix, Jennifer Lopez was the queen of Netflix, at least for the first half of the year with the mother. Have not seen it. Um, two, we have Luther, the Fallen Son. Stars Idris Elba, it looks like. Have not seen it. Extraction 2, I have not seen that. That is a Chris Hemsworth movie. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen any of these movies. You People, um, this is a Jonah Hill movie, right? Yeah, Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Have not seen it. Uh, Murder Mystery 2, I have not seen it. Your Place or Mine, have not seen it. Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery. I have seen that one. Uh, let's see. We Have a Ghost. have not seen that one. The Pale Blue Eye. I feel like I meant to see that, but I never saw it. It's a Christian Bell movie, right? Yes, Christian Bell movie. have not seen it. Uh, and then... AKA? Is that a movie? Cannot swing a stuffed jelly cat in this town without someone touting the global power of Netflix, and AKA would seem to back that. French crime thriller. Okay, cool. So there you go, man. Um, those are the ten top streamed films on Netflix in uh, 2023, apparently. I saw one of them. <laughs> um, some of those are on my list to check out before the end of the year. Um, i got to get on that, but Netflix and I are not the best of friends. I used to have a show called Flix It, thinking about bringing it back, but Netflix is... A pain in the ass sometimes. Um, but nonetheless, that is the end of this episode. If you stay until the end of this uh, show, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking that time, man. It is awesome. I love doing the show, and it's awesome that anybody takes the time to listen to the show. While we're on that point, huge shout out to the Horrific Network. They decided to put me in their Hall of Fame over there. So I am now officially a member of the Horrific Hall of Fame, which I greatly appreciate. Again, I love doing this show to death. It is a passion project of mine that I've been doing for a couple of years now, and just, you know, have a great time doing the show, and hate to ever miss an episode, rarely ever miss an episode. Uh, I would have to be sick to miss an episode, and um, as you found out recently, and then of course we have Christmas coming up, so maybe we'll see what happens there, but um, you could probably just, I don't know. We'll figure it out, but uh, yeah, very honored to be, you know, shown that support and love for this show. I absolutely love doing this show, and it's awesome, man. So, huge shout out over there to the Horrific Network. Thank you for the um, the the uh, acknowledgement and um, addition to your Hall of Fame. Greatly appreciate that, man. So, uh, speaking of appreciate, again, appreciate you all joining in to listen to this show. Uh, I have a great time. Hope you had a great time as well. Let me know what you think about uh, Wonka, if you've seen it, uh, what you feel about my thoughts of Nightmare Before Christmas being a Christmas film. Um, and then, you know, the DC and Horror and other news, man. Appreciate you all. Thanks for listening to the show. I like to end every episode with a bit of positivity so all of us can be uh, in a little more positive mindset. You know, again, this is a tough time for a lot of people in the year. Life can be extremely insane and tough sometimes. We just got to continue to uh, fight it at the best that we can and put our best foot forward and keep on keeping on, right? So appreciate you all, man. Thank you for um, joining in to listen to the show. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, week, month, year. If you're celebrating the holiday, any of the holidays going on right now, hope you have a wonderful, happy holidays. And as always, like to remind you that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.